Yeah, now that you're you're already laughing, pushing the button, Mrs. Got Ryan. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Monday. <laughs> You're a whoopee. Oh, whoopee. In the 70s, that would mean something completely different. Yeah. 70s game shows. Which we're not playing. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh, hi, Mrs. Ryan. Good we're morning. Back hello, here. hello. All right. Bring it in. Bring it in do, a little do, bit. Do. Uh, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Today is Monday, March 18th, 2019. My name is Jay Ryan. This is Nicole Ryan. We are the Ryans, and this is it's tonight's show. Almost yes, it is. Came out of my chair there. I know. Corkscrew. <laughs> I missed the auto kennels. So much energy. The auto Kramers. I missed <laughs> I the auto Kramers. Um, Hi guys. Today's guest is uh, artist, race car driver. Oh my gosh, we're so excited to have him here. Uh, Nicholas Hunziger is here in the house. He's going to be out here in a few minutes to talk to us in that chair right there. Until then, Mrs. Ryan, what's going on? Welcome back. It's Monday. It is Monday. It's the day after St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah. Which and I we're not hungover. Like, no, we're not. But I used to like play those dumb things where you like pretend to catch a leprechaun when I was a kid. What? I, yeah. What's that? Like uh, on the show? It's like a, no, it's like a parent game of like what you do the night before, like Santa kind of, like you oh, leave really? out footprints and stuff. So oh, that, that sounds more like Easter Bunny. Is it like Easter Oh, Bunny? maybe a little bit. There, You don't hide eggs and stuff. You oh, just that, yeah, wake okay. up to like a pot of gold. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. Well, it, neat. I haven't been a kid in so long. I know. <laughs> it's just, mm, there's just so much new stuff. It's all the sparkly green and I got all reminiscent. Well, you mentioned the Shamrock Shake the other day. How much longer does that go on? Because we still haven't a gotten new weeks, one. A couple weeks, I think. Okay. All right. Whew. I mean, it would be a shame after, after your piece and everything. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Ryan, um, we had a hell of a weekend. We had a breakfast club uh, on Friday that was bizarre, I think, is the only word I can use. Everybody was out of sorts, including myself. Uh, I was short with a few people. I want to apologize. Um, it was just, it was one of those days where nothing went right and you yeah. still got through all of that stuff to get out to your paradise place. And then you're smacked in the face with the real world that you thought you were leaving behind and a bunch of people who bought the place and thought they owned it because of that. They bought it for the day, et cetera. Um, and that's just not the case. Uh, it's not being a, a producer respite. who used to produce many, many commercials, yes. uh, you simply have to have um, a little bit more respect for uh, the location and certainly the customers of the location. Or you yeah. won't be invited back to that location. Yeah. And if you don't care, fine, it's a one -er, but that's not the way to, eh, whatever. It was a weird day. Uh, and once we, once everyone got on the same page and, you know, whatever, hammered it out, it was fine. But um, it was just so bizarre. Yeah, it felt like, did, I don't know if you had a book like that. I had it, and I can't remember the name exactly, but it was Wacky Wednesday or something. No, it, I had yeah. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very yeah, Bad Yeah, it just felt like that, Same where, thing. like, ev everyone had that I knew had good intentions, and, like, everything yeah. just came out sideways. That's exactly it. And, by the way, this movie crew was great. They were, fun, like, it yeah. wasn't anything that, it was just a few people who didn't quite know what was going on, and then they were acting on their, people went rogue. That's yeah. all it is. People went rogue. Thinking they knew what they were doing was correct and right. acting appropriately. And you just throw a bunch of people acting appropriately in different settings together. And it's like. <laughs> it can get weird. Uh, you man, never know. I can't believe it. Anyway, um, it was weird, but I can't wait for this week because I have a yeah. feeling we'll be back to normal. It's been a couple, it's been a few weird weeks. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like, I don't know, energetically it's balanced out a little bit. Ever since the slide and, you know what I mean? Like it's just a lot of stuff. Weird. Yeah, there's been a lot of weird stuff. Like a month stuff. of weirdness. Is that how long has that retrograde been going on? Is that is that the same uh, month or is it different? It's it's halfway through it, which to me is like the first half was actually the shadow period of Mercury. Mercury, Mer it's what we redo. Okay. So like, I don't know. So there's it, something there, maybe. Yeah, there All might right. be something there. All right. Well, um, and then the rest of the weekend, we took it easy because we don't drink and we didn't go out last night, etc. Um, but I do have a video from Ray Schaefer. Yeah. It's part two in a four part series. Still back from Amelia Island, so it seems like it's the past, but um, the coverage and everything is so cool. I'm going to play that now. It's a little bit long, so feel free to, uh, you know, take a minute. Um, but I love it. The cars are cool. I'm saying that to you because I know sometimes when it's just cars, you get a little bored, and I don't blame you at all. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to get my coffee and saddle up. All right. But for the rest of us, um, here is a fantastic backstage look. You know, I'm going to go to the whole segment here. Backstage pass with Ray Schaefer down at Amelia Island. Roll it out. 
Good morning, Jay and Nicole from Amelia Island. It's Works Reunion East. It's about seven o'clock in the morning. As you can see behind me, everything is getting set up. So uh, let's take a walk and have a look, shall we?
hope you enjoyed the walk around the Amelia Island. Porsche Club of America works for Union East. Great cars, great people. The weather's wonderful. And now tomorrow, it's all about the cars and coffee at the Concours. And then Sunday, Concours d'Elegance itself. Have a great show, Jay and Nicole. See you soon. Thanks, Ray. Love that guy. Thank you, Ray Schaefer. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, he's pretty incredible, that dude. Right? Mm-hmm. I didn't have, you know what, I have the card somewhere. I should start reading that again. But, 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 but if you're not already, please follow Ray Schaefer uh, for your backstage pass for all things Porsche Classic and, and many other things. I can't remember what the, all, what the actual <laughs> wordage is. Um, but gosh, we love you, Ray Schaefer. And um, thank you so much for giving us a peek. You know, we can't get there. We can't see what it's like from here. We're doing this show. Yeah. And there's a lot of people around the world who Where's weren't Amelia there. Where's Amelia Island? Florida. I can't okay. tell you exactly where, but it's down. Somewhere down in Florida. Yeah, it's far away for a lot of people. Yeah. That's super neat. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, big time. And so there's two more after, too. I'm cool. excited, so we'll have those for the rest of the week. Mrs. Ryan, real quick, I want to check back in the East Coast. Oh, yeah? Before we get to... <laughs> check in with Brooke. <laughs> All right. Man. What's going on, guys? Roll it out. This is Mike. It was just his birthday. He's, he's pizza life. Planet Pizza, Ridgefield all day. Good friends with Mikey Kaz. But this is the Brooke in the Kaz Man Show. And we got, we, we're here at, as you can see, it's Hibachi. It's not Kabuki's because that's closed, it's bamboo now. We're at Koo by the Dog Rock. So we got Brooke, we got Morgan, we got Mel, we got Amy and Soraya. <laughs> And every, and then we got other people walking in that are not with us. Say hi, everybody. There we go. Boom. There it is. All right. You guys gonna be famous. So, and this is how we roll on a random weekly night. We're enjoying our hibachi. Brooke, you have anything to see with the kids? She doesn't have anything. Anybody else want to say hi to Jane Nicole? There it is. You see, you got some love. There it is. We love you guys. They're your new fans, new subscribers on YouTube. Jeez Louise. It's oh not the gosh. hibachi place we went to? I think it is the same hibachi oh, place we went okay, to. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Then it's yummy. <laughs> it is. I like that I, place. The funny thing about it, oh, just hibachi on a random night, like that to me is crazy because it was always an event if you ever went to hibachi. One, it's usually a big group of people. And two, it's like just a, you know, it's a, you're going out and generally drinking. and You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like a, a random night is just kind of shows what they're all about. Yeah. That's just a random night. Way to be sporadic, guys. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Ryan, it's time to ask the question that's on everyone's mind. Dun, dun, dun. Especially mine, more than anyone, maybe. Really? What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? There is a new idea <laughs> floating around that narcolepsy is really an autoimmune disease disorder. Well, that makes sense. Like MS. So I read a lot about it, and it makes sense. From like a, just from like a lot, it just felt right. Like it's all about energy and stuff. So here's the thing. It's it's like an early version of autoimmune, I think. So it's like people just fall asleep. It, it all comes down to the same things like your cells attack other cells, but it comes down to like you have cells in your body that are auto-reactive. Yeah, any of these things it generally comes down to some sort of cross wiring or something's yeah. not doing something right or whatever, right? Yeah. And generally, all of those things are caused by oh, the body's doing something wrong, and it's generally because it's something in it turning on itself or whatever. So yeah, I think at the root of all of these things are probably autoimmune in some way. Yeah. So I just think it's a. I'd like to expand the way we use words. Autoimmune, if you break it down, is like. Your what it really means is your body doesn't like something about your own body, so like, I'm autoimmune, <laughs> right? So just like look at it that way, and then like zoom out the concept because this is all related. Um, but this is neat. They're looking at scientifically why that happens, and they're finding cellularly why it happens. So it might have implications that have farther reaching. It, it, whatever it Further can reach, talk to sure. other people. It's very cool. Yeah. Look, that one it involves you specifically, so good for you. I've decided that the through line in my stories is that the things I love, which a lot of it is you, so it trickles off of that tree, and then some of it's me, so I love myself, so I, whatever. You. And then what I things I like, which is also its own tree of like different Think, things. Things that interest you, right? Yeah, so yeah. the through lines are there, but damn, do they look all over the place. That's all right. I think it's great that you explained it. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just figured I'd let everyone know. Um, a man completed a half, speaking of things like me, a, a blind man completed oh. a marath- a half marathon in New York City using guide dogs. Wow. The, it's, you see blind people with dogs a lot, but being able to run those distances, you have to like switch out dogs like a couple of oh miles. Oh my in. gosh, it didn't even occur to me because of stamina. Yeah, they can't do the whole thing. When you said multiple dogs, I was picturing like the Iditarod. I couldn't, you know what I mean? Like a New York dog walker, 10 dogs. Drink. Wow, that's so funny. Yeah. In a re- it was a relay of multiple dogs. Yeah. Whoa. So what I love about this guy and this story is that it's, uh, we all know that it takes a human village to make us work. Like, we all know it. He's blind. He's like, I need to ask five people a day, like, what color oh, the help. street sign is. Like, right. whatever. So he's not saying, like, I don't want a human guide, which is, like, the normal thing to do for runners and stuff. Okay, so blind people run marathons all the time, but they generally have a human guide versus a, a canine or a variety of canines. If they run. It's not a common thing because of the stigmas and the difficulties okay. of, like, getting someone to run with you. And part of his thing is, like, it's not your own... R- it, running is, like, an individual race, mm-hmm. which life is, like, an individual thing. Like, you want to live the way you want to live. And so being tethered to another human takes that away. Interesting. So That him, makes a lot of sense. I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So I love that he ran it with dogs. Like, it's a new way to think about stuff. So... Even if it's not as easy and they're switching out dogs. That's pretty rad. Um, Okay. I'm pretty sure I love Elon Musk to go back to why I do certain stories. Um, I think he reminds me of me. Oh, really? He's just, like, he's super smart. and But he also, I didn't mean, I added that in. I should really edit myself. Um, He does things his own way. And he rules don't apply to him, which I did, and sometimes in a good way and sometimes in a bad way. But he's like, I want to stay on schedule. We've got to test this test or whatever that we're doing for SpaceX. And so what if the nose cap is busted from the last one? Like, we'll just test it without. It's a low atmosphere test. Like, we don't really need it on this one. I don't know. He's going a little nuts. But I, I love that I'm following it, that he's doing his own thing. Wow. I, I mean, I heard the story there. I, I think what you're saying is there's a story where Elon had to do a test, but his nose cone was busted. So he said, ah, fuck it. Um, is that what you're saying? And you like this and you, your position is all right. I like that. And because I trust him that it's going to be fine. I try to try, have faith in him, in his intelligence that yeah, like, I do you too. really I don't need that. it if he says you don't need it. I agree with that, but. It's like that's blind. I mean, where that's blind faith. We're just. Oh, I think. I think he's smart enough to do it. So therefore, it's a little nuts. But I'm throwing my faith to him because I do trust him. This is not the first test. This is like the second or is there, third. Is this anything important that we're talking about? Yeah, right it's now? like the beginning stages of the, what they're going to send to Mars. So I'm guessing they're testing other stuff that doesn't okay. really need the nose cone. But kudos. I still can't get it, but that's okay. I like that he's following his own path and trusting uh, himself. I That's love always that. okay. my thing, trusting yourself. And then, um, okay, maybe I'm. This is where I'm, my superficial intelligence really comes into question. I really <laughs> only knew about poppies from Wizard of Oz, and I really, what? yeah. No, no, say it again. I, I really only knew about poppies from Wizard of Oz. Okay. And I really only knew about Lake Elsinore from when we went skydiving there. <laughs> but apparently, the whole town got shut down this weekend because. Well, it's people, poppy season. It happens every year, but this is apparently a big one. This was a big one, it's and big bloom. people seem big surprised bloom down there in Lake Elsinore. Yeah, it's south. Yeah. Yeah, there's a southeast. There's a whole. Uh, there's a whole P- PCA. I don't know what group, but I know David Heenan's going because I just saw it on the thing, and he's such a good photographer. Uh, so I'm assuming one of the Porsche Club in the Los Angeles area. I just don't want to say it's Los Angeles. I think it's GPX actually. I think. Porsche Club of America Grand Prix region, I believe, is doing a drive down to go see that this weekend, as a matter of fact. So if you you should get on their thing if you want to go you see You should that. take a look because the town is shut down. They were going to shuttle people in. And then they were like, people are going hiking in places that you're not supposed to hike. We Maybe we shouldn't shuttle them to places they're not supposed to be walking around. So they just shut the town down. So maybe you have a gander before you drive all the way out there oh if that's what gracious. you're going out there for. But also... It made me think too much of a good thing. Is that what it is? It turned it into me of like the same thing we say every time of like respect the crest, like respect mm. nature, respect what you're going to look at. That's beautiful Leave and it awesome. Than you. Yes. And like 
if it's gorgeous, leave it gorgeous. Like, and what really are you going to remember more from hiking out somewhere treacherous to get a selfie? Like, let's be serious. I don't know. This puts me <laughs> in the mind of uh, when the government shutdown thing and the Joshua Tree Park sustained mm. so much damage. Uh, you know what I mean? Th- 30 years, 300 years worth of, I can't remember what it was, but like some uh, catastrophic damage just from the sake of too many people running amok, ruining yeah. it. People, it's it's gorgeous. Let it be gorgeous. Yeah. There's really pretty pictures that are way better than anything I could take. Oh, your card's up. At. Is that it? That's it. Oh my gosh! That's and that's what's been going what's on. going on, Mrs. Dun, Ryan. Dun, 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that our well, we'll talk about it in here. But our guest asked about having Porsche in Porsche life. If that's been problems for us, I imagine the NBC thing might get to us before the. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things. So it's like, and you hi pull guys from everywhere. <laughs> um, if anything, we mention NBC every time. So, yeah, you know, uh, Mrs. Ryan, let's take a quick break. Okay. But um, uh, I'd like it to be un. un- uh, le- mm, I don't know how to say this. It's going to be different than usual. Okay. Uh, instead of music, I'm going to put this up. It'll be just like that. But I'm going to try to uh, put a video on from Nicholas Hunziger. Um, it's kind of a little introduction video. And I, I, I want to play it, period, but I didn't want to play it while he was sitting right here. It almost seems a little bit of a waste. So blah, blah, blah. Okie doke. Here's my <laughs> – could have been over by now. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. introducing yeah. our guest. Typical. After every weekend, we get so wordy. Do you <laughs> notice that? We're like, there's so much stuff we have to say. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Uh, we'll be back. Nicholas Hunziger is going to be sitting right there. Here's a little video about him in the meantime. See you in a few. My name is Nicholas Hunziger. I'm an automotive fine artist. I feel fear twice before a race and before a painting. It's not so much the fear of getting hurt, it's the fear of failure. Even if I die racing tomorrow, my paintings will live on. From that point of view, my legacy is kind of set, because there are 300 works of art or 400 works of art. As an artist, you kind of remember for your body of work, and they kind of tell you who I was or who I am now. To me, good design has always been, you know, how much can you eliminate and still communicate? Uh, I'm trying to create compositions that are very dynamic, that to me communicate speed. If I can accomplish that using just a couple of colors, that's more representative of racing because it's, you know, it's brake, throttle, left, right. Any input you do on a race car, whether you hit the throttle or the brake, that upsets the car. When you upset the car, you slow it down. How little can you do but still get around the track? When you do well in a car, you kind of become one with the car. When I paint, it's, I'm trying to create the same feeling of cohesion, that everything is there for a purpose, everything works together. Most people would say, you're so lucky because your artwork is in the Porsche Museum and on every continent. Only 1% of artists sell something and even fewer of them actually make a living at it and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what it says about me, but to me, being able to race, that's a bigger accomplishment. It really does make you feel alive. Racing is dangerous, but if you don't race, you're already dead. But if I don't paint, I'm dead as well, because that is my legacy. Very nice timing, Mrs. Ryan. That was pretty, pretty exceptional. It's almost like we planned it, but we did not. Nobody would believe that we did that all in real time, though. (laughs) Certainly not with me (laughs) operating behind the wheel. All right, we are back, and Nicholas Hunziger is sitting here. What's going on, man? How are you? 
Hello, hello. Feel free to put that wherever you're comfortable. All you right. get comfortable and then bring the okay. mic to you. I think this there works. There we go. Get that going there. Oh, good. Yeah, you look great. Fantastic. I don't know about that. Oh, sorry. Uh, your shot looks fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. I think you look great. We uh, what's happening, up. man? Thanks so much for coming here. Well, Appreciate thanks for having me. Um, well, what's happening? I just came back from Laguna Seca. Well, um, we just saw that video that tells oh, right, yes. everybody a little bit about you. If anybody doesn't know, certainly a fine artist. I right. know you as a race car driver as well. I don't know how you fancy yourself. Just what, how would you describe yourself? Um, I guess I'm, I mean, you know, by trade, I'm a painter, obviously. Okay. I don't make money racing cars. I'm, I'm, I might get the, you know, free, a free seat or something, but that's it. Well, that's a nice, nice thing to get as a yeah. free seat. But you're a fine artist by trade. That's your yes. deal? Yes. Okay. I only know you from your, your, where you house all your stuff. Right, that right. Play. What's it called? The, the studio, the shop. Yeah. Is there a name on that no. one? Okay. It's a hundred good that, design. Probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, That's the gift mm, shop. You've been to the gift I've shop. I've been to the gift shop because yes. I have a really great red shirt I wear right, the other day right. that has the same logo that you're wearing. Is that not your studio, though, as well? No, the studio's next door. Oh, I now. didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, there's a studio next door where I work by my... I used to work where the gift shop was. Okay. <laughs> but I just <laughs> didn't get any work done because, you know... I mean, I would get work done, and it's nice that people stop by and say hello. Oh, I see your point. <laughs> but, you know, it's... It, I mean, it's it's really really nice. Art? Yeah. Well, no, it's really nice. But you know, if someone comes by, they they chat for two hours and they buy a T-shirt, and then you realize you've made twelve fifty an hour. So you know that doesn't work. Yeah, so not the not model. Not no, the model. no, that's not the model. So I'm I'm next door, um, in a big space, and we have all, all my painting stuff is in there. Awesome. And some cars in there. So it's. Yeah, it's better that That's way. That's so cool. Yeah. What a creative space you've got. Now I feel like we haven't been in the vault. Right, yeah, you, <laughs> haven't, you, know I mean? you haven't been yet. You, <laughs> next time next you come time. down. Next time you come awesome. down. Awesome. More um, to do. Yeah, I don't know where to start with you, but v Dubber for Life is one of our favorite people in the world, and he right. is why you're here today. He's okay. a huge fan. Well, I mean, we wanted to have you here, but right, he, he's right. the one who, who set you up. Um, uh, <laughs> that sounded terrible. Can you tell we're new at this? Um He's a big fan of yours, and and I don't know if you know what he's got going on. He did a little something this weekend. I just wanted to play while you were sitting here. It's very quick. Oh, he he started up his engine? You got it. Roll it, Hal. Don't you love that jumpsuit and everything? Come on. Is he the coolest? I know. He's got everything. Very buttoned up. guy knows what he's doing awesome. yeah that's funny um nerve-wracking first you know 30 minutes because you have to run it in at like 3500 rpm or whatever so is that does. why the idle's so high and everything that yeah has you to run be it way? in you kind of get all the, the first time you get the the metal parts you know the ones that are touching each other to mesh with, with each other and you want to set your rings and break the cams in is that with the zinc oil and all that stuff too uh, or is that different? zinc is just good for old uh, old engines oh, in general okay. yeah and so, yeah, so the f you run it in for, I don't know, 20, 20, 30 minutes. And it's a long 30 minutes because, <sighs> you know, and also when you're not used to, because when you drive, you go 5,000 RPM, 6,000, no big deal. But if you're just standing there, oh, it's man. really loud. Yeah. And, and after five minutes, you swear you've been there for an hour. And you know what you just paid for it all. <laughs> right, You don't right. want to do it again, you know what I mean? So. Holy crap. Well, congratulations, buddy. Yeah, no, good it's job. good for him. Um, <laughs> I, I know you guys have some things in the work. I'm very excited to see what happens there. Um, can you tell us about you and how you got into art and everything? I know your family is also... Um, right. So I'm a fourth-generation fine artist. Um, 
Okay. Right. I'll just leave so that the right blood. there. Yes. <laughs> so on, that's on my father's side. And they were all classically trained. Um, so my great, uh, how does that work? My great grandfather was, um, he was a painter. And at, you know, in those days, just before movie, ca- uh, film camera, uh, sorry, uh, camera. So like portraiture and landscapes. Okay. Uh, so very realistic, obviously. Wow. Because you know, you didn't have a camera to take someone's picture. So he would do. But how do you get trained for that? How does uh, well, that Well, there's happen? schools. I mean, you know. Really? Yeah. You study art. So he was a mountain climber and uh, primarily a painter. And then he had two sons that were twins. And both of those, those were my grandfathers on my father's side. And they were, so it's they my, were, well, sorry. You, uh, that, yeah, yeah. That's a hell of a trick. Yeah, it's not Jerry Springer. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, well, one of them is here today. Let's bring him in. (laughs) Um, so he had two sons, one of them is my grandfather, the other one's my uncle, sure, sure. And they were uh, identical twins, and they both uh, studied uh, fine art in Paris. And one of them, uh, I mean, both of them lifelong painters, and I mean, that was their trade, so uh, you know, it went and they made a living doing that, yeah. So it went from you know, obviously, they did a lot of portraits and landscapes, and this was in the 1920s in Paris, so they got into the early um, impressionism movement. Oh, wow! And then, and you know, one of them would also work as um, nowadays, I guess you'd call it a set designer, but he would like paint the backdrops on on stages. Oh, no kidding, yeah, in France, in Paris, yeah, for operas, yeah, yeah. and then. Uh, my grandfather also worked as okay. Uh, also worked as an illustrator, what you would call today an illustrator. So he would for paint books, like, uh, like he would do Art Deco posters oh, for like cool. the oh, Olympic cool. Games, you know, like advertising the road. stuff. Yeah, advertising stuff, advertising art. Beautiful. I, I will, yeah. So he would do. Well, I kind of um, consider that what you do a bit too, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, because you know he had that. You know, like he did a Bugatti poster. It was very famous in 1932 um, and he worked for a shoe company called Bali which you may have heard of it's a Swiss shoe company it's like the Swiss version of Hermes it's a leather company oh wow but they Hermes sh- right <laughs> yes <laughs> sorry <laughs> not uh, proper <laughs> they make um, mainly shoes I remember so, that from like it was super fancy like when I was looking at tennis shoes which I guess right kind of makes assembled. sense it's like a soft leather yeah. it's so buttery mm. um they, and so you know they would have those Art Deco posters with like the girl on top of the mountain with, with the shoes on and yeah. tying her shoes and that kind of stuff. So he would Gorgeous. do those kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, kind of like that poster you have. Heavy. That's the style, you know. I gotcha. Yeah, and then so I and then my father was. Uh, oh, the one by the oh yeah yeah that oh, that's a cheap yeah. print. I don't know. No, can't but I mean even that's the that. style. That's kind <laughs> gotcha. of like the Art Deco <laughs> style, right? And then my father was uh, a musician. Um, professional musician. He was a flautist. Uh, my mother is a professional musician as well. What and did she play? Both the flute. No so kidding. They, they they toured the world as a duo. Um, That's pretty amazing. As yeah. a duo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, playing with you know as a duo. Oh, and pl- as playing, two chairs. Yes, I got you. And then playing with with uh, you know orchestras and I mean they were wow. everywhere. They were in China and Japan. That's they beautiful. Carnegie Hall. I mean, all over Europe. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then my dad was also uh, a painter always, you know. Um, and then he started doing some sculpting. Um, and he does these kind of abstract, um, like, seascape or landscapes that are kind of three-dimensional. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I mean, not strange. I mean. Well, in what, I mean, on what, what's the meaning? A lot of it is, is found stuff. It could be a rock. Okay. Or it could be driftwood. Or it could be... Um, you know, a little canvas that he makes, and then he kind of creates an impression on it. So it looks like oh. a seascape or a landscape. Oh, but it's wild. very, very, uh, it's very abstract. Um, That's so neat. Yeah. And then, so it, it's a little bit, a bit like his, his grandfather. I mean, not like, his, he doesn't paint like his dad. And I don't paint like my dad either, because I paint like my grandfather. No which kidding. Which proves so that skips. nobody wants to be like their dad. Right. right? It skips yeah. a generation <laughs> or whatever. So. That's so yeah. funny. Um, yeah, so that's on my dad's. That's on my um, father's side. That's the family, the art. But district. so you really are born into it. Yeah, I mean, that's the easiest right, way to right, say Right, right, I guess. It. And then I went to Art Center. I mean, first, yeah, I went to Art Center. I read that right, right here in Pasadena. Right. Yes. And then. Was, um, how did that come to be? Was that your choice? 
Uh, well, I was uh, originally came to the United States when I was 18. I was recruited to play tennis, uh, to play college tennis. You guys started talking about tennis yeah. before the show. Is that why? I, I don't know. She Holy just mentioned cow. Serena or something. Yeah. I, so, it just came yeah so I came here to play college tennis, and then I got hurt, and I was reading. Um, and my cousin is Julian Thompson, who designed the Lotus Elise, and he's now, um, I think he's number two at Jaguar behind Ian Callum. He's, he heads oh up the goodness. advanced design studio at Jaguar. And so he gave me, he offered me an internship at Jaguar. Um, um, actually, you know what, when it, um, what was I doing? Oh, Art Center, yeah. So I got hurt playing tennis, and I kind of, you know, I didn't have an education yet. And obviously I had to have some kind of education. So um, I was reading a car magazine as I was always into cars, and I saw these design sketches from Art Center, and I thought that's just kind of neat. Come on. And and you know, so that's so I looked into it, and then I, I applied, I got in, and. But it starts with eh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah, inspiration. Right, but I mean, you know what? I, was, I was always doodling cars. I mean, through my entire life, I was I was painting or sketching. Like, okay, so everyone already doing had that it in at your home. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, you know, my dad, like you know they teach you about whatever two-point perspective and that kind of stuff. I mean, you see the yeah, set, the forced perspective right, in here, yeah, my goodness. Right. So there was always, you know, like my, oh, everyone's always like sketching or doodling something at home. That's normal. So then I got into Art Center and then um, I was actually going to study car design, but there was, at the time, I think there was like a two or two year waiting list because the classes are so small. Mm. Um, and so instead of, you know just waiting or doing a couple of internships i went to advertising art um which kind of is what my grandfather did right then i was in advertising for about seven years 99 to yeah 2006 used to produce commercials too yeah i was writing directing tv commercials and going 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 all over the world creating culture yeah Mm -hmm. wherever you look Kind of yes, and then we um, all know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so right. But um, yeah, and then we moved into this house, and so for the first time, I had some walls. Um, you know, just wall space. You know, yeah. instead of just having an apartment. So I wanted to put, you know, just put up some posters or artwork, and I just looking around, and I was looking kind of for like an Art Deco thing with Porsches in it, mm-hmm. and I couldn't really find anything. Right. So I just decided to paint my own, kind of in my That's grandfather's cool. style. Yeah, that's pretty um, rad. And so I painted four, and I just for, just for you, right? Yes, yeah, for, for myself. Home. Yeah, and I just sent some pictures to of, to a friend of mine in Switzerland, called Marco Marinello, who runs who owns Eleven Parts, and he goes, "Oh, these are great. I'm gonna buy them," because he's a huge Porsche guy. So he says, "Okay." So we agreed on a price. I shipped them over, and so I still didn't have any artwork. So I just painted some more, <laughs> and then. Um, <laughs> I think literally the At least it's next in his blood, though. I painted these pictures, and sure, they're for sale. I mean, right. it's always oh, yeah, for sale. I mean, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I can not? paint you more. Know, yeah. And then I, it literally, I think the next, I, I sold some. Or then we bought a house, and I think the, the, the what's it called? The, not the broker, the, the, the real agent? estate guy. The agent saw one of my paintings in the back, in the sitting there, and he goes, oh, this is cool. And um, so we, we, I think instead of taking his fee, he took a painting, you know. Wow. And then I think, I mean, this was super early on. And then I think literally the next client was uh, a famous comic in New York. Um, <laughs> did you paint something for him? Or? Yeah, uh, that's I very funny. His, his sister bought something for him because okay. he owned that car. Oh, cool. And so yeah, it was one of your yeah, car yeah, depictions. Somehow, and... he, uh, because Marco knew, you know, he was kind of in the Porsche world, and, he, and people would come to his office, and they see this, and say, oh, this would make a nice gift. I didn't realize cool. that, there, that you had a connection there. Yeah, and then um, it, later on, he's, I mean, he's got a bunch of them now, but sure. late, later on, it, and it just kind of snowballed, you know? And then so 2006, I was still in advertising, and by 2007, I was kind of making more money selling paintings than being in advertising. Wow. And I didn't have a boss. Well, the miss is at home, but. That's different. Right, yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, so I just made the transition to just painting full time. So about 2007 ish. Wow. That's so, so cool. Yeah. And so you're a dozen years in on that and it's going fine. <laughs> well, fine, I mean, right? yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of like when you read, you know, like you, I don't know, I read history books and it's like, I don't know, you know, he was elected something, but it takes 10 years to do something. You know, yeah. it's just a line that says, 
famous overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but to get years. anything, get yeah, anything done, twenty years before twelve that. years. Yeah. So wow. now people say, oh, you know what? You know, you're everywhere. And he says, yeah, but it's only taken twelve years. So that's how it goes. Yeah, it's how it goes. It but, is true uh, that you can't go to a car show or Cars and Coffee without seeing your yes. shoes or yeah, your uh, your iPhone cases, phone you know, because everyone's got their phone right, out right, all the time. Right, yeah. Um, let alone whatever anyone's, you know, actually wearing, just wearing right. attire-wise. Yeah. So that so, must feel good, though, I would imagine. Um, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, hope it does. No, it's. It, I think it's flattering, you know. I mean, it's. I think it's, it's a – or gets a re- reaffirmation. What is it called? Reaffirmation? Reaffirmation that, you know – That the, your stuff's good? Doing, yeah, the, because, I mean, you know – Obviously, the because uh, then we started this apparel company, two thousand eleven, making our T-shirts. Um, it's just an offshoot, like your real stuff did, is the art. I stuff. didn't really want to do T-shirts, to yeah. be honest. It was really more. We would go to Monterey, for instance, and um, with my paintings in a booth, and then the missus would say, "Well, you know, you should have at least some T-shirts for sale, because not everybody's going to something for uh, five thousand right. dollars. Yeah, and at least if you don't sell a painting, at least." Let's pay for the room. The trip, you know? <laughs> so, I, and I always I like was, your wife. you know, I'm not, you know, I'm an artist. I'm not. I don't you don't care. think about yeah, the money. I'm not the yeah, gift shop. You I know, know. That's not I don't what get I it either. Do. Yeah. And then, so we had like six shirts in a corner. Somewhere. So she convinced you. And yeah. You did a few. And then, so it literally started out in the living room or in the spare bedroom with like six bins with t-shirts. And, and you're just yeah. pressing them yourself. No, no, no. We had them printed somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you designed them. They're your yeah, designs. Yeah, we just took the artwork so, from, from the okay. paintings and slapped them on the t-shirts. And then from there, it grew into, you know, it's just it just kind of exploded. So. I think of you as being more of a consignment guy, though, of like, oh, if somebody needs something special done, well, they could that's go what to it you. turned into. Because for the you know for the first couple of years, I would paint things on spec, like I would paint what I thought might sell, what I was interested in. Okay. And for the last I don't know five, yeah, five six years, I haven't really painted anything, where I just paint something and then. But I you might probably sell don't it. have time for that, no, right? No, I don't, because it's all commissions now. Right. And then. What's your back order? What's your backlog of? Right now. I it's mean, like probably how long? 30, 30, it's about 35 paintings. 35 have, pieces. That I have so who knows how for. long the uh, time uh, of. It might be a year. I mean, it depends, you know, because some of them are like large orders where there's like 25 canvases wow. or pieces that go to one person. And then there's other stuff that has like a time attached to it for like an event. Like I'm doing some stuff for HSR or Porsche Club of America. And then obviously they want it for Amelia. They don't want it. Right. You know. So there, it sounds like some of this stuff is like purposed design. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Not so like a lot of times I, I get, well, I mean, I, uh, most of the times now I get a brief okay. where I get, um, it, it, the, the brief could range. I mean, I have different kinds of clients. Some clients are, I want this car, you know, from the left in yellow on that race. And, you know, I want this mountain in the background. It's like, okay, fair enough. And other people are just... I don't really care. I just want one of your pieces in my living room. That's so, how I um, would be. Yeah. <laughs> right, I with maybe this color as a theme right, or and, something yeah, like that. Yeah, so I might go by the house and say, okay. you know, uh. blue would look good in here. And then they go, okay, you know. So it just depends. It's cool. You remind me of like a localized Jeff Lewis design of like, wh- what do you want? Like, or is, is that the, the guy on that? Uh, it's a reality called? show. No, no, it's, it's the, what do you call it? The, Flipping out. Bravo. Yeah, it's the it's the the house the house what flipping he, and stuff. But what, he's a he's an agent, right, or something? He's the designer. He's the creator. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a it's a very They're loose affiliation. There, stuff. there's yeah, a lot okay. of yelling, right. but like in the sense of but like you work alone, <laughs> so you don't have to yeah, yell. <laughs> there's no yelling, but like it just it feels similar that like it, I didn't know that you could be purposed. Oh right, and like because yeah. a lot of the Portrait people have asked us like, oh, do, would you do this and blah blah, blah. and right. so it's it always feels no, like I mean, that it weird gets push very and pull. Specific, because okay. especially with corporate commissions, you know, they have a specific yeah. event date car. Color palette. Agenda. Agenda, yeah. I didn't know you did stuff. Oh, like yeah, that. no, no. Because, I mean, you know. Didn't you do the mural at Porsche Dr- one Porsche Drive in uh, Atlanta? Yeah, there's a, I think it's about 20 foot painting in there now. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. I think cool. we're shown yeah. it on the show as well. Cool. Yeah, that was done um, when 2015, when they moved into the building, they kind of wanted a t- 2015, you know, milestone or anchor. So it was 2015 Le Mans. And they had this really nice space in the, in the lobby. So I did this, uh, it's two walls that are about a 90 degree angle. And then there's, I think it's four or five canvases. And there's one canvas that is, that bridges the gap between the two walls. So oh, cool. it's kind of 
kitty corner. Yeah, I guess mural wouldn't be. That's not yeah. the right word. But yeah, but yeah, <laughs> over a large like amount of space. Yeah, it's like twenty feet wide. That's so cool. Um, neat. But, like, kudos to all them for not using a photo. Like, I totally get it. But like, right. that's super neat. Yeah, no, I think it's it speaks to their, um, uh, I guess their, uh, you know, some people still have a vision there. Especially I mean, at the time, it was Andre Usthausen and, and, and Detlef, um, who, you know, I think they, they kind of got it because they were real car guys. Yeah. So you kind of always need someone in the building or like Ray Schaefer, you mentioned him, you know. You always need some like he a, still appreciates all the heritage. Yeah, you know what um, I mean. You have to almost have the historian on the payroll to right, right. remind everybody what they're what they're working from and still sort of yeah. towards right. you know what the through line so is. So you need kind of a champion who kind of navigate the system. Yeah, um, but no, that was that was that was a fun fun thing to do for sure. All right, well, that's your consignment work and everything else. How about the cars? Was it uh, financially you were able to then all of a sudden start racing cars for fun and everything? No, or? I mean, you know, I mean, not not really. I mean, it's not like I'm making tons of money. I mean, well, I didn't mean it like that, but I meant, uh, you know, I, I, most people out there, a lot of guys would love to go car racing, um, right. oh, whether they have what, a free ride honest, or not, and oh, then yeah, they I mean, can't honest, necessarily go you know, do. I mean, I would say 90% of the cars I've driven don't belong to me. Okay. And I've pretty much almost driven every Porsche you can imagine from, I mean, every RS current to, you know, back 73 all the way, RSR 74, 75, whatever you care to mention. Wow. Um, whatever, 550 Spiders, right. 904s, um, Grand Am cars, Cub cars, Abarth, whatever, and mm -hmm. or 918s. I mean, those are just kind of come, come usually come about because of clients or, you know, you're at the you're an event somewhere it's an appearance and part of it is like driving or you give someone hot laps or something well but even the stuff that you do like in your in the car in the video we just right. watched i mean that's that's your car isn't it uh yes so um how did you get into doing that i mean what pushed uh, you in this direction what made you want to go me? that route um, and then how'd you do it um well um you know on my on my mother's side uh, my grand uncle was uh, Prince Bira, so he was. Uh, that I don't know what that means, but I heard Prince. Prince, yeah. So uh, you you might know him from The King and I. That was his uh, father, his grandfather. The story. The, the King of Thailand, yes. Okay. And so my mother's, my grandmother's sister was married to the emperor. Right. And yeah, just did you understand the royal lineage? I didn't. <laughs> and so I just see grand, like but, you know, this, a fancy this goes, lineage. This I'm picturing the, the movie where you get right. you have a medallion around your right, neck right, that actually. Right. <laughs> no. So my grandmother, um, she was born a princess, but she I think she was like the 13th child of the second wife. Um, so she would get still the, a ranking. Right. But she would get the hand me down Rolls Royce. I would break down on the way to school. Oh, my you know, gosh. Because, and she would. And I think the second wife wouldn't necessarily live. <laughs> Right in the in the first palace, you'd be like in the second one you know, because it's very hierarchical, you know. And also, of, co of course, the, I don't mean to make fun of it. No, I just, no, no, it, it's just, a different time and a different, a different place. Different it's hard to. The, I mean, reconcile. I have two hundred cousins. That Jeez, I've I mean, you see what met. I'm saying? Yeah, and That's you know, you nuts. look at the family tree. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? Right. Um, Do you have reunions or no? It's I mean, too... I, I, no, I, I, not really. I mean, they're all they're spread all over the world, you know. And every once in a while, <laughs> you're not even that popular. It's only no. your family buying your right, shit, right? Yeah, and then, so <laughs> just it's kidding. just you know, I mean, you meet someone and you're just cousins, you know. Some wow. you're probably cousins, That's like hilarious. Julian. He's my cousin, you know. Somehow, I mean, Julian, Reed, Julian Thompson. Sorry. Oh yeah. Okay. The Lotus Elise. Sure. So. Uh, but you're not bros with everyone. No, no, no. I don't know any of them. You okay. wouldn't be able no, to no, be, I guess. I don't know any you know of them. What? And you know, on the family tree, it's really only it's just married wives and their official offspring, because like concubines, there's more. Right. If you would have <laughs> right, they're not on the family tree. No. Nope. That's how it works. Yeah. They were secret. Right. They were. They were in the. In the, like the you know just even the smaller palaces. It's good know? to know that every family has that. <laughs> it doesn't matter how so, <laughs> we all have secret black palaces. Sheep, et that's right. hilarious. <laughs> but I mean you know so you never know. Um, yeah, no, so, you know we're not making light of no, any of no, this. No, no, no. I mean okay. it's just you know it's a different culture, it's a different history. So my well, but I have so my, I so my grand uncle so was much. he was Prince Bera. He was uh, the first Formula One driver from Thailand. So he raced Formula One from 1950 Whoa. to 54. In a 250F, he raced hit an Oscar. Holy he smoke. raced Gordini, and before the war, he raced ERAs. 
which um, so he had a hell of a career because all of this yeah i mean there wasn't was, that much longevity back then no he he got, he got lucky i guess in a way and you know those were the days of gentleman drivers where when you raced you were either of royalty hence the term gentleman drivers or um you were wealthy like you know rob walker with jay walker you know whiskey right kind of stuff so that's how you got to be a race car driver um and you i guess you were really good or you bought your way in basically yeah it i mean in a way it's kind of the same thing now i was going to say it's not, okay. yeah, not, it's not that today. different except you have sponsors who right. buy your way in um but or you have a rich dad or something you know um so that hasn't changed that much um so i guess you know and i was always interested in cars and yeah i mean the, i think you know i mean the lotus is not that expensive i bought it 10 years ago when at the time oh i don't I, care about the prices no but i, I just... sold maybe like three paintings and and i bought a car you know right and then um yeah and then you just get to know people and you know it's i guess it's a bit easier i mean now you're, i'm always because my entire life now is kind of cars all or cars and art all the time so you get to know people you know one guy who knows that guy who who knows another guy and he can help you with tires or he can help you set something up or well that's kind of what i was getting at though i mean it started as more of your passion and does it stay a passion when, and the when driving for sure yeah i mean i i still like to paint i mean okay. especially uh since i have this the studio where i'm by myself i i noticed my productivity goes up again because i just get to paint for like you know hours and you is can, that your artist uh mentality too where you can just zoom in and focus in on whatever um, you're doing and crank it out i don't know I, I may i guess i think it's maybe from my parents because you know like as musicians they're, they're professional musicians so they practice every day mm -hmm. and but they don't, you know, they practice playing the scales. So it's literally just da 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 They're not practicing the music to be musical. They're practicing the skill. And so for me, as a young kid, I guess you get an impression of you want to be good at something, you need to have the skill, you need to develop your skill. So you need to practice and you need to do the work. So when I was playing tennis, I was just, all I would do is hit balls against the wall. drills and shit. Yeah, and when I was playing golf, then I would hit 800 balls balls a day you know and then now with painting it's kind of the same thing you know like every morning i practice i just draw straight lines or i do ellipses or circles no kidding yeah so you work out your your art Keep the just muscles like else. if you don't Current. do it yeah if you don't do it for a couple of days or a week you can really tell it's getting rusty no kidding yeah it's a well, it really is the same with everything we feel yeah. that uh, you've heard us before i mean yeah, monday mornings these shows are rough <laughs> they're <laughs> yeah, not good that's why i'm here right? yeah no thanks <laughs> thanks so much no you made you it good are such thank a god nerd. Thank God you're here. Bottom of the barrel, guess. Um, Such a nerd. <laughs> what is your, I mean, I think it, it's obvious that oil um, is what we see most of your work, but it's do you have a favorite actually. medium? Oh, is it's it really? All acrylic, acrylic. Yeah. Because yeah. oil is, is turpentine based, so you can't, I mean, you could paint. My grandfather's did. Do you get a similar look, or am I just uneducated? No, on you're what uneducated. I know? Okay. Because okay. The, the actual oil paint um, contains the solvent for the paint. So mm. it's a bit like a it's it's a bit like using a sharpie on a piece of glass. Like you can draw a line and then you use another sharpie or the same sharpie. You go over it again, right? It has the same alcohol in it, so you lift the paint that's already on there. Interesting. So that's why oil is very good if you blend colors. So the step from one oh. color to the next is not a is not absolute. And then the style I use. Um, is kind of what my grandfather did which is kind of this art deco style but that that was actually but that's um, how you get your color definitions then yeah but the, the style at the time was you know those were um what's the word they were um kind of imposed on him by lithography and you had these lith oh. lithograph plates so what's you that? would only have four or five different colors so the lithograph oh. is a stone where you would print like everything that's blue and then you have another oh right, right, right. like a printing press blue. yes or, okay but so it was etched on a stone okay in the old days okay and so you would only have i mean only you would have four or five different colors and they were you know it was red blue or whatever colors you chose you chose but you wouldn't have unlimited amount of colors where you could blend them so that's okay. why this art deco look when they first started using printing presses. Because they were all different could, plates. Yes, you had the different plates. So you have five different plates. You have five different colors to play with. Wow. So you would use the background color, for instance, right? 
as as something and that's what i thank you so much for that education you just gave me no (laughs) joke no joke i'm fascinated i have a weird memory of like wood stuff that we used to carve out with little tools that were similar but like that's that's just one color thing yeah you could run it with ink that's yeah. basically the same thing. So you could do that five more times, one for each different ink color, uh, for instance. Right? Oh, like making a rubber stamp type of thing? Yeah, Is that yeah, what yeah. you mean? Yeah. I see, yeah. Right. Yeah, it is, right. Yeah, same it's thing. Same principle, okay. yeah. All and right. You could etch it or carve it or, you know, it doesn't okay. matter. So it's the same thing. And it's basically screen printing is the same concept. Right, right, right. Yeah. So working with acrylic, is that the medium that you prefer? Yes, always. Yeah. It is. It's the fastest for me because it dries fairly quickly and I can fix mistakes. Do you sketch? Do you? Uh, sketch it out. Because now, I, nowadays I, I paint, I mean, this year I've done, I think I finished about 10 paintings this year. Al- already? I'm, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure. on track. <laughs> I'm probably going to do 35 more this wow. year. Yeah. So it's probably going to be 50 paintings this year. So it's, it's about wonderful. one a week. So, That's but awesome. you know, I mean, it's not, well, some weeks I might finish five at the same time because mm-hmm. I've they're always working on a bunch of stuff at the same time. So, but you sketch them out first, I, like with nowadays pencil. Nowadays, I do. I just don't have the time to experiment on a large scale yeah. on the canvas. Because mm-hmm. in the old days, I could like, oh, I'm gonna move this over here and paint this oh, over. Oh, you have time to do it. Over, yeah, because right. you know, you do one painting a month, or you'd sell one painting a month, right? You know, or every couple of months or something. So you just didn't have time. Wow. So now I just don't have time to. But do you sketch at all? Do you? Are yeah, you yeah, a sketch yeah. I sketch a you lot do. Of okay. Car. I usually just cars or, you know, when I'm bored. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Relaxation. <laughs> yeah, or if we have when an idea, phone, we have an do, idea. Do, do. You'd think about something. Oh, that might look interesting. Gotcha. I have some friends who are um, car designers, like Freeman. So we, our game oh, is cool. to sketch each other, uh, to send each other sketches of cars that we improve. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's here's funny. A Lotus of Elise, his you know, car, and you make it better. Or no, just in general, it's like here's oh, a Lotus Europa, but you know, here's how it could look really good. That's but he'd send awesome. me something, so it goes back and forth. So. Gosh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, I guess it's always, but you know what? And now that I think about it, it's always been like that. Cause if you went back to my, uh, school books from primary school, they were all filled with cars anyway. That so, early? Yeah. yeah okay. Well, it's like you with the, yeah. the desk stuff. All of this stuff. Yeah. I'm just drawing, I was drawing oh, this microphone, microphone right. and this desk. I've looked at his like Flipping notebooks because right. like we studied a lot of the same course type stuff and like mine are meticulously nerd like right. this equals this and but Mine's not two his. seconds of notes and then I've drifted into a right, picture. Right. It's so funny. <laughs> that brain is so different that you guys have. It's interesting. How 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 do you uh, keep focus? Are you uh, you seem to. You seem to be a more focused guy than maybe um, I am. What do you mean, or used like? to be. I don't know. I mean, in general, uh, to, to do the work that you do and to even have the hobbies that you do, you know, race truck, car driving, um, they both require a tremendous amount of focus. For you to have right. 10 or 12 paintings going on ba- at one time, um, yet to work on each one individually. Um, I don't think that's that difficult. I, I guess it's because I, I like what I do, because otherwise I just couldn't do it. Okay. I mean, and, and also because I guess I just found the two things I excel at. Because I'm literally terrible at everything. Else. <laughs> Is that true? Like, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I could play tennis at the time, and you know, when I wanted to play golf, I got down to scratch because I wanted to be a golfer. And then, then painting happened, you know, or something else happened. But it does, it's always been like two or three things in my life. It's never like ten things. Right. Okay. All know, right. I don't get any pleasure out of most things that people enjoy. Like I've never I, I'm been that to, way, too. I've never been to a concert. I've been to one concert. I'm that way, too. You know, I can't stand I the people. Don't care. Yeah, and, you know. Uh, not the people who go to concerts. The the amount of people in one place yeah, is too or, much for me. Or it just doesn't seem fun. You yeah. Know? Like, if you see, like, or, you know, uh, what's that thing when they drop the ball? <laughs> New Year's Eve. Yeah, and you watch it on TV. New York it's City. Like, oh, my God, this, this looks I like hell. I never want to go. This looks ever. like hell. Yeah. <laughs> Even Dick Clark was freezing his ass right. off up there. I mean, yeah, fair enough funny. if you get paid and it's your job. Fair play. Okay. Fine. Oh, yeah. I'll go right. host anything for anybody. But <laughs> you have the money different. for it. That's right. you, you pick get, to be That's there, part of your yeah, brand. It's an appearance. I get it. That's right. different. Yeah, but if you're just, you know, sitting there that oh. freezing, I mean, I just don't get it. And there's a lot of <laughs> things like that where you just go, you know, someone showed me a picture of Burning Man. Like there was a, a, a drone shot with mm-hmm. that. Uh, it looks like a refugee camp. Yeah, no, thanks. It's just like, <laughs> this looks like hell to me. I, I happen to agree. Right. So we, we are the minority, right, though, I think. I guess. All right. Do you think That's it's because fun. you're more sensitive, because you're able to take in more than perhaps the average person? More in what? 
input uh, stimulation, um, just in general. You know, those things are the, what other people need to right, right. have a good time is way too much. It's overwhelming oh, to me. Gotcha. It's, oh, it's too much stimulation. Right, right. Yeah, I don't need I don't that know. much because well, I'm more sensitive. Maybe it's because you know I was I was alone a lot as a kid. Same here. So um, because my parents were you know practicing or they would be on tour or so I I played a lot of Legos. I had every toy in the world. Is that how you uh, harness, like, uh, maybe grew creativity? your creativity a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I think so, because I was problem solving. You Me know? too. So, and now. What do you make with Legos? Cars. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, I, had, I even had to train, and I converted that to a scale electrics with, like. Oh, no way! And racing Come two on. trains. Yeah. And I would, <laughs> instead of locomotives, I would build race cars. So. Oh, I love scale yeah. electrics. Oh, that's so fun. We didn't, um, we didn't even hilarious. have them here, but we had some, some version. Right. Yeah, that's so, so cool. it was always Funny. cars. But I think just being left alone. Um, you know, you figure out a way to entertain yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's just... You learn to ignite the fire up Yeah, here. so it's just, in my case, I guess it was creativity. So you always find something that you like and you do. Um, wow. It just happens that I found a way to kind of make it into something productive or something something that resembles a career. Oh, you're doing all right. Did you ever play any musical instruments like no, your parents? never. Never took anything? No, never they, picked anything no, up? No, I mean, it's fair play to them. They didn't feel like it was, you should force someone to do it. Well, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Creativity. It's pretty but you are so creative. People. I wondered if you had yeah, put any no. effort towards that. My mom thinks I have perfect pitch. I bet. But I honestly, I don't even listen to music. I mean, I, I have perfect pitch, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if you did for all of the same reasons right. we just talked yeah, about. Yeah, I don't really listen to music. That I mean, my, you know, if you look at my playlist, it's it's embarrassing. You know, there's like eight songs in there, and and they, one they of stopped them in probably, '96, probably. Yeah, I don't know. It's like you know. Tattoo or something. I mean, tattoo? I, I don't know. You know those two Russian girls? So you don't listen to music? No, I don't listen to music. Oh, I've amazing. been to one concert at the Hollywood Bowl. Me too. What about what What about uh, when you're working? Do you have anything uh, I listen. I listen to NPR. Oh, that's nice. It's um, relaxing. Yeah. Um, I, I watch YouTube just with the sound on. So I would watch like 1972 Spa. Oh, or no like kidding. A, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, 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 yeah. Or I watch, you know, some, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube because, you know, motor racing was always there. And like, you know, like if you, let's say you're BP, like British Petroleum mm -hmm. or Castrol or Shell, you would just go out and shoot that thing because it was just there, right? It was mm -hmm. just a happening and you could shoot it. It was so. Oh, an event. It was an event to shoot. So there's all this footage out there, you know, like Pathé with just oh they went to whatever you know crystal <laughs> palace and they're just shooting cars going around because you know i mean there's a lot of sports like like boxing or wrestling right they're just kind of it's just happening you film it yeah well, it's, i think it's that's how espn easy. classic came about right right they but, did have all that stuff. yeah 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 it's much easier than let's say golf right because you'd have to go to 18 different places whereas the cars are coming by you again right here, they're yeah. coming by you right <laughs> so it's it, it's a very good sport for television that's pretty wild to be filmed, that. you know, because so there's so much footage out there. So a lot of times I just find some old thing and or, just put it on the background. Yeah, that's or, awesome. Yeah, that's nice know. though. That's I mean, the inspiration. Or sometimes it's just quiet and people who come in here, it's like, how can you be quiet for eight hours? I was like, oh, it's fine. I'm really glad you said that. People never get that from us. They're like, you must talk all the time. We're like, I'm like, no, no I don't right, ever, I don't the ever know what's in going on. The quiet, right. yeah. believe it or not. Yeah, so it's like, and also you can you develop a communication nonverbal also if right. if you're around the same people enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> she doesn't like that. <laughs> it's just so funny because it's not everyone seems to be looking for something to fill them and it's like just sit by yourself oh. in the well yeah i mean a lot of times i always feel like i don't want to it's weird but it's just, you just get to the point i don't want to consume anymore yeah i don't care what it is so that i get 100 percent. yeah you know i don't really watch tv that much well but it's nice to stop consuming and then go create is that what you mean like you can turn uh, it off or just here in general you know like if i don't know i mean i read a lot too so that's great um, for your yeah. for your brain and creativity. Right. So, what kind of stuff do you read? Uh, well, obviously books about cars. Yeah. Okay. Good. No, that's cool though. <laughs> like autobiographies and stuff like that. Uh, or, well, or obviously, truly yeah. I mean, stuff. there's there's different. I mean, there's there's a, there's some fiction. It's actually pretty good from like um, from the fifties and sixties about motor racing. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, a fictitious character, like a Jim Douglas from her whatever. Yeah, just maybe type think of, of it like like uh, like like a Grand Prix story with like a guy and a girl, or and, but the current cool. Americana might be the. Or the Sebring race is the backstory or something, you know. So that exists. You have to go That's find awesome. it. Yeah. And then obviously a lot 
I mean, that's maybe part of my job, but I have a lot of car books, or now I get sent a lot of car books, which, you know, or you're in a book, so you read the whole thing or something. Yeah, yeah. all your automobilia stuff at your place. Is right, yeah. I mean, I took of... more pictures of your stuff right, than yeah. everything you there's were... A, or, or, <laughs> or old magazines, you know, just like an old... That stuff's cool. Old sports car magazine, motorsport magazine from 1956. And interestingly enough, they're complaining about the exact same thing. In 1957... The letters to the editors are racing is so boring. Why can't we go back to the old days? No shit. It's the same no matter what. I cannot what. believe anyone would watch this. And we look at this as the golden the era. Heyday. Right. Yep. And now we say racing is so boring. Yeah. And now I don't know who is watching this. Why can't we go to 1957? So it doesn't matter, huh? No. It's just Isn't you don't something? like yeah. what's happening now. That's Call what it same. is. And it was always better before, right. no matter yeah, what. No matter what. You would, I, I mean, I, I just, who did I show this to? Um, it was it was the motorsport magazine. I think it had like a Zagato car in there. Okay. And they were saying it was the ugliest car. I've ever oh my god! Like, <laughs> like I would never, you know. So it's just whatever is coming out now, no one likes it. That I think wow. that's the moral of the story. People just like to complain about how everything is shitty right now. Yeah. yeah the pu- there's automobile. Uh, maybe is that what it is? Cars tend to have it. It, it brings a lot of people. There's pu- a lot of purists. A lot of purists, and that seems to go against. You know what I mean? We're all thinking, we're all, all living in the past. All, it all the purists and the. It feels very cyclical, like fashion and cars and stuff. It all comes point, around. Yeah. Like, it's all. So you can hate it today. You might like it in 10 years. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know. I mean, With some new of it stuff. is design. You know, obviously, some things have design languages, and there's things that age better than other things. Yeah. And, um, and sometimes you can tell, and sometimes you can't. Well, some design languages understandable and some is not for me right yeah for sure and there's things that are just look beautiful and they're really old i mean quote unquote old they're mm-hmm. 100 years old or 50 years old and there's things that are 20 years old and they just haven't aged that well mm-hmm. and but you know i mean i think that's kind of the challenge if you're a designer is which direction are you taking things yeah do you ever do anything like that do you ever design and do you ever get like free thinking and just start fucking making shit that's not your what art, do you mean? your normal art. I don't know. Oh, Have you ever, like, like you said you came up with problem solving as a kid right. and so did I. I mean, do you ever just fucking make something cool to solve a problem in your shop or anything? Oh, um... Do you know what I mean? Like, are you creative in that way too? Like, making weird shit? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I just don't have that much time because yeah. right now it's really, you know, I paint... I go home and I'm tired. That's the common theme with you right <laughs> yeah. now. So and how then, do we lighten your no- load so you can keep doing um, this for a long, long time? Yeah, I mean, we're kind of working on that, kind of making the the, the workloads. Um, like, I don't have an agent. You know, I don't have a manager. Yeah. So we're kind of looking into that kind of stuff now. Just Sounds like we're in the same place. It's, you know, because, I mean, even like as an example, coming on the show, you reached out to me a year ago. I'm here now. I know, right? And that's <laughs> and, and it's sad, but that's pretty much you experienced the the typical, ex, you know, that's the Hansiker brand experience. If you're a customer, <laughs> you reach out to me, you know, and we'll get to it. You know, there's and but the the, the I mean, you laugh, but you know, there's a lot of calls. To just I just don't get around to it, you know. Yeah. Sorry, PlayStation. Ah. <laughs> Wow, we beat out PlayStation, yeah, Mrs. Kinda. That's pretty good. I don't That's know pretty good. I really like my shirt, and I really like having you here, so I'll take it even if it's a year. I don't want to – yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow after he's gone, but the amount of swag that showed yeah, up today with this, I'm surprised you didn't have a Sherpa. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> bags and bags of stuff, so well, thank you. We, we do have a lot of clothes. We have a big warehouse. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what is the future for you? What is coming um, You know, up? I really don't know yet. Um, obviously, I'm always going to paint mm-hmm. and – I'm always going to be involved in, I mean, with automotive art and, and cars in some fashion, obviously, because I don't think you ever retire. Um, Does the painting come easy to you at this point? Is that I know that's unfair maybe uh, to ask. I don't know. I never I, thought of it. Personally, I want to know. You know what I mean? Like, do you, do you, do you just throw no, it up there and it looks amazing? No, no. I mean, there's, I mean, I had, I just, I'm just painting a singer piece now for the Mulholland car. Okay. And it took me a year to crack that sketch. Really? Yeah, could not figure it out for a year, because it's got that topographical map on it, mm-hmm. and it's got a lot of features on the car. It was at Luft. Uh, it was at yeah. It was at Luftgekult last year. Uh, Dark blue with the yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice car. Lightest Singer I've ever driven to. It's a really okay. nice. Yeah, Ma- really makes a difference. And um, yeah, it just took me ages to figure out. And then some things you figure out 
in five minutes you go okay you, you kind of know this is what it should look like okay so it's it. the idea and then the actual yeah work. but it's then just the some work. things it's just you know you try it put it away come back to it put it away and i, f I don't know how many sketches that singer have done but it just doesn't work and then eventually works it sounds like you may have just answered but has there ever been something where you've got you've got an idea and it's just so stinking good that you know it's going to work and no matter what no matter how you configure it it just doesn't work have you ever had something where it's just like it's a square peg round hole no matter how simple um, it seems that sounds like my life um that's fair <laughs> i don't know um You know, I don't know because I'm, I'm, what am I doing right now? I'm doing project nine, I'm in, on my 950th project since I started. Not 950 paintings. I've done about three to 400 paintings. Has someone and, already and ordered 950 your... projects. And one project could, could be, each of them get a, a number, like with Porsche, right? And so mine are NH. And so I started at 13 with my first client. So he didn't know I was, he was the, fir of course, the first. Of right? course, of course. <laughs> Perfect. One. Right. So You're awesome. the first 12 don't exist. That's great. And so from then, every I n numbered every project and I have a list with everything, right? So it could be as small as, I don't know, I did a, a, a sticker design for someone, I don't know, who passed away or, if, you know, in, in, or it could be uh Oh, like Art, a tribute thing? Yeah, like yeah. it could be a tribute thing that from from a guy that contacted me on Pelican Parts in 2007 when I was doing things like that. Or <laughs> it could be Kimi Raikkonen's helmet design at Monaco. So each of them has a number. Okay. And so now I'm at night. And not all of them translate to a painting, obviously, because a lot of, you know, as you know, a lot of things get abandoned or, you know, I mean, there's so much. I, don't, I mean, just on the design side, there's... You don't just paint. No, so it's because on the design side, there's probably there's maybe ten percent gets produced, right? Because yeah. there's so much stuff with so many brands that, you know, you, you start out and presentations and meetings and you know you always make you always present stuff, right? And there's so many or car stuff or parts, you know, there's just so, so much stuff, right? Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, so you ask me, I'm at night twenty five, so I, I'm sure there's a hundred of them that you thought, oh, this was going to be good. At and the time. Of, yeah, and then it just fizzles out or it just doesn't work for whatever reason. But, you know, I mean, there's always another project. That comes yeah, totally. Right. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, just no, more no. On the lines of, just, I, I can't think of one. I mean, not... You know what I mean, though, that fucking disaster where it's just like, this one's going to be no problem, and then it just oh, seems like it, but it just, well, for whatever reason, doesn't go. No, I know the reasons. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Moving on. Not not all, not all the clients are the easiest. So I choose to look at it that everything is part of a bigger trajectory, and that there's no mistakes, even though it feels like it at the time. It's all going somewhere, uh, so everyone can take that or not. But that's yeah, how I that's look a, at it. That would be a nice world, wouldn't it? You know, Yo, I listen. I I feel every one of mine. So right, I'm right. not saying there aren't uh, any, right, but right. like. I was just talking to someone the other day. Like, do I live in that place? Like, no, it's so uncomfortable. Right. I can sit there and beat myself up for as long as I want. But, like, what good does that do? Like, right. just get out and make something better. I mean, yeah, funny. I mean, I mean, especially once you get into the production side of it. Yeah. You know, you, you start the minute you start making something. I mean, that's kind of the, the one thing. I mean, you know, I, there's a lot of things you start doing because you just don't know that you shouldn't be doing them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You know, no one ever told me. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's like nobody told me I shouldn't make shoes or start a shoe company or have a clothing company or, you know, start another company in Europe and have five employees there and all that kind of stuff. You know, no one says, oh, that's not a good idea. Learn as you just go. go. Like, oh, no, no, let's, <laughs> we need to make two million in Europe, you know. Yep. So it's, um, and then it, you know, then a lot of time things just go completely sideways and you, you know, you might lose money or something. So, or in my case, I did. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's just, but you know, a lot of times you do these things because you just don't know that you should, you know, what you really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. So, and that's just, I guess, that's the learning experience, right? Yeah. It's just you learned, you learned the hard way. I mean, <laughs> sometimes that's how I have to learn. Right. It's miserable. Uh, I uh, opened the social up to some questions. You want to take some sure. questions from some people out there? There is a Chip Benefer. This one, where Chip Benefer would like to ask Nicholas why he 
it says does wash his car, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't, doesn't yeah, wash couple, his car. Couple of cars. Yeah, they don't care. Um, honestly, I mean, that's the, that's the White Mouse, the 68 uh, Sports Purposes car. It's just, I've never washed it. I think it just looks better unwashed. Yeah. And if you look never, at, ever washed? No, 10 years. Okay. Uh, and if you look at it, if you look at pictures, you know, like from 1955, and there's a speedster um, sitting in, in the Porsche, courtyard and in the background there's like six cars they're all dirty and bent beat yeah. up and have mm -hmm. a couple of dents in them. they always character. look better that way yep. yeah character and if i were to wash that particular car it wouldn't look that great because there's a million dents in it and you know so not dents but there's a lot stuff. of stuff there's know. life on it yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely just, you know, the hood came up and all that kind of stuff so it's cool better that way i think nice That's and awesome. if i have time to if i have time to go for a drive i'd rather go for a drive than, than wash it i love it yeah, yeah. i love that that's um, basically the main reason uh asking what's involved this is from uh, cheney 960 our friend brian cheney down at uh, he runs Hi, the brian. porsche night down at ace down in florida uh ask him what's involved when considering using or showing the porsche name in anything he might produce that's a good question right yeah i mean so i have a lot of licensing agreements with different um organizations brands companies yeah um, and I think that really helped me when I was coming up as a painter to have these the access and the, well, or the, the relationships, the relationships. <laughs> and, you know, in a way, it's a bit like a, um, you know, it's, it's it's like a not a knighthood, but it's kind of like you get the you get a blessing in a yeah, way, you know, a seal of approval. Yeah, it's like a seal that they they like what you're doing or you they hire you to do th certain things. So a lot of so when anything we print like posters mm -hmm. or. If it's in case of shirts, it's always licensed. Like if it's golf, we have a yeah. golf license with the shoes. If it's Steve McQueen, we have a Steve McQueen license. If it's McQueen Racing, we have a McQueen Racing Anything license. you might make money off of. Anything you're going to make money off of. Yeah. F f yeah. And so in the artwork, um, you know, in this particular case, it's Porsche. Uh, Porsche is very, very difficult. Um, and to be honest, it's, it's, I guess it's a bit like getting a knighthood. You don't ask for it. They come to you. Ah, uh, you know? interesting. So you... I couldn't yeah, you can't tell campaign. You, I couldn't tell you the channels to go. It's it's Porsche Germany, and they really it's you know it's an honor. And I think it's but it it is kind of a blessing. I think this is. I think you answered it great. Yeah, yeah I so think so. I, I couldn't tell you A to Z. No, but the but the right. fact that it is it is a factor. You don't right. just use it willy nilly. Right. Yeah. Um, tomorrow's customs would like to know. Out of all his paintings, which does he wish he could have driven? Well, you might have answered this already. Um. I'm assuming the vehicles in these paintings, yeah, versus driving a um, canvas down them. I really have a thing for the McLaren F1. Oh, that's classic. That's your for jam a for a street car. Yeah, Gordon Murray is okay. It's pretty pretty high up there. Uh, race car, probably something with a DFV engine in it. So maybe like. Jackie Stewart's race car or something like cool. that. Cool. Yeah. Holy cow. Look at you. Yeah. Uh, do, this is funny. This is from, you mentioned Singer. This is from Steve over at Singer, Steve Artinian. Uh, does he own, wear other clothing brands other than his? Anything we don't make, yes. So the joke right now is, you know, maybe I should get into underwear so I can <laughs> wear my own underwear. <laughs> because because I, I, I thought about doing a clip at some point. But it's silly because I get up in the morning and I have a shower and I dry myself in the official McLaren Hunziker towel. Oh, wow. <laughs> you really do. And then I can have an espresso in the official Porsche design espresso cup. Right? Absolutely. And then I can put on my official golf or McQueen <laughs> shoes. Yep. And I can put on my official McLaren you really could. shirt, you know, and I can have my hat and then get my car, you know. So and no everything. denim, no jeans. You don't do that. No, yet, right? we don't. What about designer sheets? So when you no, wake up, no, but we have pillows. <laughs> oh, know, that's it. Yeah, that's my, true. Sleep on my pillow. I, you know, I have my iPhone cover. Look at that. <laughs> that's true. That's in you your know, hand I all the time. Look at the time it is of my own watch. So, um, yeah. So anything that's where you, you know, I, I think you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Nicely done. Um, <laughs> do you you make your own watches too? Well, don't I mean, you? I have a deal with uh, with BRM Chronographs, which is a French company. But I've seen in your shop you've got yeah, what yeah, look yeah. Like so watch we, making tools. Yeah, well, I mean what 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 I do is they send me blank dials and I hand paint them. Oh, no kidding. And oh, then, so you have an assembly disassembly type of situation uh, over there. A little bit, but it's really more like those are just sample 
pieces. Wow. So it's they sent me a, a blank dial. I hand paint a dial. Let me see if I can. I think I know. Can turn this. I think I can turn That's this into a cool. camera. That's pretty cool. And then so they're I all different, the like yeah, by they're default. All they're all yeah. yeah, they're all one offs. And then That's so neat. Um, and then we send. I send a dial back to the factory. They pop it into watch, and then it comes out as an official BRM watch oh, with cool. warranty, and you know it's waterproof. And, it's been and you're done. We're done. Yeah. Um, Is this? Oh, yeah, that, that's a thing. That works all right. Okie doke. There we go. Coming around. So, oh, that is beautiful. Look so at that. This would be my watch with the little white mouse car. That's stunning. So, I hand paint is under a microscope. So, all of the, uh, let's see, get that. Like with the little tools that, like. Tiny brush. Yeah, you have to modify your own brush. Or I had to modify my own brush. Really? Those well, little it, ones you did? Well, yeah, like this. The dial is, you know. It's tiny. Yeah, so I have a, I have a microscope, and then um, I mean it, the principle is the same. Like for a big, for a small painting, it's just, you know, so much smaller. But how many hairs are on the brush that three. you use for that three? There three. you go. Three squirrel Horse hair. Horse hair. Yeah. Uh, squirrel hair. Squirrel hair. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Kevin brush. Yeah. So you. I call uh, a little hair. springier, a little more spring um, to it. No, it's uh, they're softer, oh. and then. Two, you can't hold the paint. You can hold the paint with two, but you can't really release it. So with three, I can. Re you can hold the paint and release the paint. Look at you. Yeah, it's very strange. No. No, way. it's a science that you've That's worked so out. Yeah. I'm sure you did. That wasn't a random. You worked out. No, I worked it out. But you know, I, I was just thinking about this because the, the first time I did a really large commission, I did a painting, or I accepted a commission for. I want to say maybe like 25 feet, or 45 feet. <gasps> And That's a big difference. Yeah, and then someone said to me, how are you going to do this? Have you ever painted anything this big? He says, no, but it's, I'm sure I'd figure it out. But let's just get the check first, get the yeah. deposit, we'll figure it out. And, sh you know, you figure it out. And then when we started the watch thing, he says, oh, this is a good idea. So we did the deal with BRM to send the dials over. And then the first time I got a dial, I go, wow, this is really, <laughs> really small. <laughs> and then I got myself one of those. You know, the model makers wear those glasses. With oh, yeah. yeah. Or art restorers. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, oh, that's you know? all I yeah. see. He's Janos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I looked at it, and it's just, this is not going to work. I can't see anything. So now I have to get a microscope. Oh, my gosh. And then and then you use your brush, and, you know, you had to dial, and you put the brush in, and it comes in like, you know, like a giant finger. You know, it's like, holy cow. We need to modify. So, oh, my gosh. But, but I've seen your little thing. You got the clamps and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, I mean, it's you know, it's it's just it's all relative, really. At wow. the end of the day, you figured it out. You're yeah, awesome. You it out. That's amazing. Um, we're we've been going for an hour twenty already. But oh, um, okay. is there anything you want to uh, you want to know about us or anything else you want to tell us specifically? Um, well, I really should ask you questions, but I'm I'm not. <laughs> But I, don't I guess care. my nature is just that. <laughs> You're very chill. You're like so easy. I just don't care. I wasn't raised <laughs> to be polite and oh, be good. interested. That's all right. Um, well, I mean, you know, we've talked privately about yeah. things. I don't know if you have We're much. We're good. No, I didn't mean that good. you had to have six questions <laughs> right. lined up ready to go. And go. What's your favorite cereal? <laughs> Lucky Ooh. Charms. Okay. I would say that by default, too, although right. it's probably not true. Some sort of granola, I would say. I've never yeah. had Lucky Charms. I think you're probably better off for it. It's okay. absolutely just they're they feed horrible. it to cattle. They really okay. do. Yeah, well, would they feed anything to cattle? Yeah. It's a very low bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do people keep up with you? Um, yeah, your favorite social media. That's your favorite thing in the world. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, social media. I'm so bad at it. Um, <laughs> uh, we have an Instagram channel, obviously. I think it's Hunziker Design. Oh, you do? And yes. Oh, I'm going to look that up. And then there's on Facebook, I think it's Hunziker Official. All right. Um, Is that just to post the stuff you're working on, yeah? Yeah, mainly. <clears throat> oh, let's I see. have I'm to get better to at it, or we have to get someone to, to help. We're figuring out that situation right yeah, now. Yeah, it's just... This is this is Instagram Live or whatever Hi. the heck, however. But so then, you know, we'll follow you there as well. Nick Hunziker. There's tricks to everything. It's not for everyone. Well, I mean, so. you know, I'm I'm just I'm torn because a lot of people, you know, there's just so much going on, and if, you know, I, I don't know because maybe it's because of my upbringing with my parents, because, uh, you know, it's just classical musicians. There's always a seriousness to it, to your craft, right? And so the emphasis is really on your craft and not so much on the fame. 
So you could, Bravo. Be, you could, I mean, if I wanted to, I could probably line up every event I get invited to and every car show and every track day and everything that people ask me, oh, are you mm -hmm. going to, you know, but I, I wouldn't do anything else. Right. Right. There and, wouldn't be time for your art. Right. And I don't want to be that person because I think there's enough of people like that. Yeah, that's it. It's just a different skill set. It's yeah. just a different guy. So, you get yeah. the other guy for that. I'm right. the guy who does yeah. this. So I think, I mean, I get it. You know, you have to be, you know, at, at some point you need to sell your art because that's what painting, you know. You don't but, seem to be struggling on that side, though. Well, no, you know but I mean? I mean, it's still, um, you know, it's always, I mean, on the clothing side, obviously, it would help to be bigger or to have a That's have true. Outreach, okay, cuz you know? cuz we can't make you paint more paintings. It's only you and you're the one doing right. them. But so maybe some the of the other stuff could. Yeah. So maybe that's in the future for you. Yeah, for sure we need to work on that cuz we're you know, we're just doing an awful job at that. Would you let us know uh, if there's anything we can do now or in the future to help this process? We like you very much. We love your work very much oh, thank and you've you. been nothing but kind um, to us over the the year or so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, do you want to talk sponsorship? Have a thing. Or yeah. You can do yes. giveaways. Uh, absolutely. All that stuff. I yeah, mean, not right can, now, but absolutely. Right, well, let's right. for yeah, sure for talk sure. about that it's stuff. Easy. Yeah. That's Great. Like low hanging fruit. By all means. They say. Mrs. Ryan, anything else for Nicholas Hundecker? Mm -mm. Just mad love. Yeah, mad Can't love. Can't believe is you right. were in Lacuna Seca yesterday. Yeah. Oh, can we talk about that? Holy smokes. You really, I know we started that, but you really did just get back? Yeah, yeah, I came home last night. I put the trailer away. I was there for the weekend. Thanks for coming, there, man. No, it was a good race. It was good. Thanks for coming yeah, here, though, now. Thanks. After right, that, right. I might sleep in. After no, that I mean, you know, I have, I have two more meetings. No, what am I doing? I forgot. Tomorrow, <laughs> might tomorrow be bedtime we have meetings after this. tomorrow, <laughs> and then uh, Wednesday we prep because we go to uh, Thursday we go to Willow Springs. With cool. with your car? Uh, Willow Springs is the Lotus, yes, and then at the end of the month I'm running a. Uh, what am I doing? A Road Atlanta and a Porsche. 911, 68 Trans Am car, 911 Trans Am car, Road Atlanta. Cool. Yeah, that's Okey a good doke. seat. Yeah. That'll, That'll be fun. Be fun. Forward, forward, looking forward to that one. That'll be awfully yeah. fun. And, you know, I should mention that it's not just me. I mean, there's there's other people involved, right? I mean, especially on the on the design side. You're a good guy. Side. Go ahead. Let's hear it. No, I mean, there's, you know, obviously my better half, Heather, ha does most of it. Heather, who it's, takes care of everybody whenever you have an open house, the spreads much, yeah. and the hospitality, and well, is everyone uh, having a good time? Is yeah. everyone eating? Does everyone have everything right, they need? Right. Everyone like has Mama a role. Bear. I like I mean, it. I learned not from just all that. You I mean, it's literally. I mean, we joke. If she died, it'd be worse if she died than if I died, because I. Well, let's not do the odds either way. No, no, no. But, but I, I, <laughs> I would. I don't know where to check because I don't know how much oh, money we funny. have. I don't know any password to anything you're the artist you don't need to know that stuff no but i we should write it down i think <laughs> no, that, may be a, that may be a plan you know so all right fine. yeah but th she does a lot of like a lot of the stuff you know the now the shirts just get made you know i don't go down to the warehouse or whatever the production place the, the place yeah where everyone, does out of, you know? <laughs> everyone does something man everyone does something just there's just more boxes that show up with shirts you know, so, so love to heather and the rest of yeah, your team obviously they're doing a great job yeah by all means you're killing it man we're big fans uh mrs ryan let's see tomorrow we have we have wayne fetterman tomorrow yeah is that right mm -hmm. and then wednesday dan brun is here dan brun architecture thursday closing it out with john benton yeah it's a hell of a week oh, big week a, a lot of fun uh thank you so much for oh, being thanks here, man. for having me thank you Mrs. Ryan, I love the hell out of you. There we go. I love the hell out of you. Love you too. Uh, Nick Hunziker, we love you. I hope love. that you enjoyed your experience. Thanks no, for coming all the way up here. We yeah. love everybody at home. Please love one another, and we will see you tomorrow.